But if I were to sort of summarize what we have heard so far, and perhaps we can uh, try to have a lot of our ID colleagues that are on the call here. We have Dr. Segretti sitting here as well, and we can definitely try to uh, come to some sort of a resolution as to how we move forward. So feel free to send your sample uh, a question. So the first question that we did ask is, what is the role of NGS? And from what I can understand, and unless there are uh, oppositions to this, I think NGS could play a great role in culture negative cases. So these are infections that have existed. Dr. Segretti is shaking his head. Dr. John most likely will agree. Uh, so culture negative cases where you don't have the organism, it would be great to send it for Microgen DX. And the signals that come from it, and this is obviously my opinion, I think any signal comes on that particular one should really be treated. I'm going to have uh, Dr. Segretti uh, weigh in on that particular issue. Yeah, I agree with that entirely, Greg. Plus, also the treatment and uh, uh, implant retention with antibiotics, I think that it could play a major role in treating those patients. If you're getting uh, an arthrocentesis, you can have an answer before you take them to surgery yep. as to what the likely organisms are, so you're not wasting time. That's interesting you mentioned that, John, and that was brought up last week also. So I don't know if you heard Dr. Segretti, but he says he agrees completely that culture negative should be sent for NGS. He also brings up another point that was uh, mentioned last week as well by another uh, attendee. In these DARE situations, the acute implant retentions, he thinks that would play a great role, one, because of the speed uh, with which we get the results back, and secondly, that would actually also give us some information. Another circumstance that was brought up by tumor surgeons last week, and I'm not sure if we have any tumor surgeons today, I know we have a lot of shoulder surgeons, and Grant, Ben, uh, I'm gonna ask you guys weigh in in a second, uh, but in the tumor situation with megaprosthesis, they wanted to see the entire profile of organisms because obviously a failure in that circumstance is really, really drastic. So Dr. Gutowski and we had Dr. Uh, uh, Capriano, Cara Capriano and a couple of others, they thought that any time they're gonna do revision on tumors, they would do it. Now, last week we had a lot of shoulder surgeons also. Grant, uh, you've got a real problem in shoulders. I mean, you see a lot of C acnes, right? And we don't know which of those circumstances C acne is good uh, organism and which of those circumstances is acting as a pathogen. Do you see a role for NGS in the shoulders? And if so, how and when? Yeah, I, I'm really interested to hear everything uh, that's going on today there's definitely a role for it as we uh you know have the same diagnostic issues but even more so as p acnes or c acnes is our number one cause of shoulder pgi so the concern for us is the uh false positive rate and so i'm interested on you know that i've been very interested to hear that discussion about whether a more sensitive test will not come along with less specificity because that's certainly not what we want. Um, the cultures have been shown to be not sensitive or specific. Um, so I think I think uh, the fact that you know uh, the numbers that have been shown have been very impressive, and I think this has a huge role for avirulent organisms that don't elevate your ESR, don't elevate your CRP and are not reliably identified on frozen sections. So very, very intrigued to hear the presentations today. Thank you so much, Grant. Um, and a lot of you have been sending me a private message asking how you get this into your hospital. Um, if we, we sort of had to uh, jump through a lot of hoops to get it into our hospital. And uh, we had administrators that were very resistant, but between myself and colleagues, we proved its worth in uh, definitely in revision cases. Uh, we do it on everybody right now. If you need to try it and you would wish, you want to see the ortho key, we would really be interested in your insight. I can have Brian or somebody else help you to do that, administer to work, to try to get it into the hospital. I think the more data we collect, the more we know about this technology, 
the better the future is going to be for us. The other area that people have brought up its use is in the infected non-unions. Uh, Karan, they were very interested in your data. A few people, Dr. Bauer wants to get a, a slide deck, Dr. Uh, Samir Mehta, trauma surgeons on this call. We would love to send the data to them for them to evaluate. I know it's an ongoing study. We just gave you the preliminary data. We can certainly do that. Absolutely. And um, I think uh, there may be also a role somebody brought up in this conversation today, a role for doing the signature of the synovial fluid in some of these asep uh, excuse me, septic arthritis cases that have been infected in the past. Oh, yeah. So Rick says that apparently in the office when you use it, Medicare covers it. So patients will definitely not be billed for it. And I know that in my practice, when I use it in the office and if the payers, there's issues with the payers, microgen DX gets involved and usually there's no issue with the office. Obviously in the hospital, the hospital has to pay for it, right, John? There's the DRGs in it, part of the uh, DRG thing? If it's Medicare, yeah. So there are ways to get over that one. But since a lot of you had sent that private message, I just wanted to let you know it, it's great. We would love to see you evaluate it and give us input. And maybe in the next advisory meeting, we will be able to answer some of the questions uh, that have um, that have existed. One question that also comes up, and I'm sorry I didn't bring that up, is, and Nick Shami just asked that question, is does NGS give you enough information as to how to treat these patients? Uh, Joe, and then I'll ask John. <laughs> That's a tough one. Uh, NGS gives you a potential panoply of organisms that you can choose to treat, as opposed to culture, which may give you none or many fewer than NGS would give you. The real role of trying to, to choose an armamentarium of, of antibiotics and antimicrobials to treat these, uh, you know, is a, is a science and an art in and of itself. Microgen does a great job in screening, really screening for those genes which may obviate certain therapies. For instance, the, the use of third generation cephalosporins when there is a, a major ESBL there, and even going to carbapenems. Uh, when there are CREs, and these beta lactamases are uh, extremely uh, broad based, complex, uh, but they are very functional. Uh, and the presence of, the, I would say, of these beta lactamase, uh, extended beta lactamase uh, genes, I, I think for Dr. Segretti and me, and me would, would, would put up a real red flag and say we probably cannot use those antimicrobials. So uh, the, the short answer is uh, NGS with speciation of the organisms along with uh, a, a, quick, uh, a, a quick array uh, of the antibiotic resistance genes that are present gives you a, a much better chance at your initial and ultimately, when I talk about post-hurricane post effects and ultimately the, uh, uh, what may be a palliative regimen for, for you to use orally for a long time time to come. I know that doesn't answer the question completely. John John or Mike may want to add. John, do you want to add to that? Yeah, there's still some uncertainties in how to best treat PJ. And I think your study looking at the uh, treatment and treatment failures as an endpoint will go a long way to answer that question. So looking, looking forward, forward to that, that mm -hmm. says a lot of, a lot of it is guesswork. Yeah, so Dr. Segretti yeah. said basically. Yeah, yeah, yeah. say one more thing, though, that, that, uh, uh, you know, you know I, I think that with Dr. Schmidt in particular calling this a disruptive technology, we are disrupted in this approach. But that doesn't mean the approach is still lost. It is opening our eyes to a brand new world throughout the other genome that is us and that is the microbial yeah, wonderful. So Dr. Segret said that there's so many unknowns about treating PJI, how true uh, that is. And uh, they really put a lot of weight on the outcome study that we have started. If you're interested in uh, being part of that outcome study, let us know. The outcome study is basically we will randomize the patients into two groups. One group will be treated based on the NGS signal. Another group will be treated based on the culture signal. 
and that and, includes uh, culture negatives. And we will know, we will look at the failure rate, and this will answer a few of the questions like, should you treat multi, uh, um, multi-microbials? Uh, should we, um, you know, make a distinction uh, based on the NGS signal or not? And that's pretty much the urine, urine study that was done. And Karan, as uh, he mentioned, we are, we are going through IRBs, and please let us know if you're interested in uh, being part of that study. I want to ask um, Rick another question. The, the turnaround time for NGS is, is good, but it's not great. And some of the people who've used it, they usually reach out to me and say, what, what is Mike JNDX planning to do in order to bring that turnaround time uh, lower? Or are there things that we need to do, we as surgeons and doctors need to do to make this a little bit smoother? Yeah, yeah. I don't know. Can you hear me? Thumbs up, thumbs down. Ah, so so. Bolo says so so. Ah, maybe, maybe louder. Yes. Um, so turnaround time. Again, let's start with sampling. Um, if we get a inadequate sample with a, a, a very low yield microbial DNA, um, it's going to sometimes take us multiple runs through our process, which uh, would increase the amount of days to, to report out. Um, if we have a, a great sample with a good yield, um, then our turnaround time should be in the three to four day range. So it's only when Send, send us samples that have really low yield of, of, of microbial DNA, DNA that we have difficulty and we're taking longer to turn around results, results to you. However, However we, are we are looking at ways, ways to improve it. Um, um, we're actually running on six days a week now on Saturday, Saturday um, and we're doing, doing things in the lab to um, to speed up the process of, of especially with the orthopedic samples. So, no, so right. there are things that we need on to, to improve and that. Somebody's asking, are you on the other side of the wall or this side of the wall? Are you this side of the wall? Okay, there's that. I think it's, that's probably good. Yeah. So that's, that's fantastic. And I know some of you who are on the uh, call today uh, can't use Samples to Microgen DX on select cases. Rick has done that. Oh, yeah. Oh. Rick, Rick, Rick uh, I was just saying, for some of you don't, who don't have access to Microgen DX because you're outside the US, feel free to reach out to us because Rick, uh, Microgen DX has actually processed samples from various countries on very challenging cases. When the surgeons reached out to me about, uh, you know, situations, and I think in some of those circumstances, it has been extremely, extremely useful. So it is available out there also. Uh, to close, anybody propose, we're going to do the outcome study that we talked about. Uh, does anybody feel there is a need for other types of studies or for generating, uh, uh, generating uh, evidence, further evidence for NGS? Ask that question again, Jay. Should we do any more studies? Yeah. And Dr. Juranic, while you're thinking about it, Dr. Juranic brings up a question, Rick, for you. It says that um, the criticism I hear concerns the probe size of 350 to 450 BP is fairly large. In indolent infections, there may not be many fragments that large. Still trying to figure out the culture plus NGS negative cases. It may not be just sampling the Duke folks were trained by microgen staff. So do you want to bring that up? Well, I'm not quite clear with what he's referring to on 350 to 450. Oh, not... Is that a PCR thing, Nick? Yeah, he's, 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 I believe he's talking about the ink. Yeah. 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 And the, and the, yeah. Aluminum, yeah. And the yeah. aluminum platform gets around that. Yeah. Because if you recall from the video, video and Illumina goes through an amplification of all the DNA there, which is why when you send chunks of tissue, you amplify so much human DNA, which is why it's so important to have the P size, because then bacteria will outnumber the human DNA. 
and it, it's a numbers game. But the Illumina platform will amplify the total DNA that is present. It glues on a, an adapter that then has an Illumina specific primer, and then it's in the post processing and sequencing data that the 16S information is illuminated uh, bioinformatically. It's not where the 16S primer has to do the lift. Illumina's amplified all of the DNA, and that is the beauty of the microgen process and why it's truly NGS and not your hospital labs based PCR. And that's why we can look at antibiotic resistance genes as well. We're not yeah. doing 16S for antibiotic resistance genes. That's absolutely correct. Yeah. And I think um, it, it, it's, it's fair to say that absolutely the Duke study was done properly. I wonder what we meant earlier, at least what I meant earlier, was did these samples and Bill, Bolo, you guys were part of the study, did these samples go to microbiology lab first? And did they then send the sample to you? And that's why you said that you didn't receive multiple samples in some of those cases. The question is, I, but that's happening in my hospital now. It goes to microbiology and I have no control of what samples come to you at this point. And I think that's an important issue that needs to be brought up. I don't know if there's a solution to it. But the ultimate measurement is the fact that what we received in the lab in our, it's what's documented in our LIS system. And I, can, I looked at the two, uh, samples and the matter the point is that we did not receive multiple samples from these cases. We so often received one or two. Um, so, regardless of whether our local rep was able to communicate sampling technique or whether it was applied, but I can say that over the years I've had many discussions explaining the sampling technique to a surgeon, and then when I look to get the sample, I get a big chunk of tissue. I'm like, well, that's not what I said to do, but that's what I got. Yeah, I think now we have that video, and I think if you, any of you tried that ortho kit, the swab, the flat swabs that we have, really very, very important to use that on the implant surface and the implant and bone interface. Again, that's a double woven polyester, very, very special type of a material that picks up DNA. And then the intermodulary sampling with the use of the other swabs. And as Rick said, you know, unlike culture, you don't need a big piece of tissue. You should just send a small piece of rangeur, it really uh, the size of a split pea, uh, and then put all of those into that 50 mil bottle. They will extract the DNA and they will give you the, um, uh, the answer. So Amir Mehta says opportunity to open fracture treatment in acute setting and better understanding contamination, particularly redefining the GA classification system. I think this was also brought up by, uh, in a subtle way by the other trauma surgeons. Very, very good. I think Grant and Ben have probably got ideas about some shoulder studies that we could do. Um, I have to personally leave because I have another meeting that I have to attend to. But if you want to continue the discussions, please go ahead. Otherwise, I'm signing off, and I'm very, very delightful, delighted to all of you who attended this meeting. Thank you so much, and we look forward to advancing the science on this uh, in the hope of helping our patients. Thank you. Thank you, Jay. Thank you, everybody. Thank you, Jay. All right. One thing I would like to touch on a little bit more is the 300. Can everyone hear me okay? You're okay. So something that I wanted to talk a little bit more about was that concern about the 300 to 450 base pair being too large to be picked up. The probe itself is not that long. We're using two primers um, to amplify a region of that size. Um, so we're not using one molecular beacon, if you will, that's going to have that's going to require that entire chunk to be there. Um, we're going to pick that up. And even in a even in a shared sample, the odds of finding base uh, finding fragments that large is increased. Also, a lot of our all of our samples go through a fragment size selection process. So that concern, I think, is maybe a misunderstanding of how the amplicon sequencing works. 
Um, I just wanted I just wanted to point out that the probe itself is not that long. The what the amplified region is about that long, and that allows us to pick up two variable regions of the 16s and ITS genes. <laughs>